Hello, Radiant One, and a very big and a very warm welcome to Mastery, the show and podcast for brilliant spiritual beings like you having a human experience, ready to ignite the mastery inherent in you, as well as grow and expand from within and wanting to lead with love in work, business, and life. Designed to activate the mastery already within you, here we merge the worlds of seen and unseen, magic and miracles with the mundane and the practical, spirituality with strategy, the energetic with the physical, and business and work with a whole lot of love and soul. I'm your host, teacher, spiritual business coach, and radical love rebel Maria Serafina, and it is my deep honor, my great pleasure, and joy to share this episode with you. I serve leaders, executives, and business owners wanting to learn and be supported as they navigate leading with heart and soul. I do that through the Spiritual Leadership Academy, the Spiritual MBA, and one-on-one spiritual business coaching, all of which you can find out more about on my website, mariaserafina.com. The number one thing my clients always tell me they leave our sessions with is clarity which is why I've transformed the process I've used for almost a decade, divine clarity and aligned action into a free guide for you. Go to mariaserafina.com forward slash DCAA to download it. In less than 60 minutes, this will give you peace of mind, crystal clear clarity, and guide you in plotting your path and next step. If you enjoy mastery, please do subscribe, like, comment, share, or leave a review to amplify the energy and love being shared in these transmissions so it can reach more and more gorgeous, radiant beings just like you. Today I'm joined by the magnificent Tina Maria Larson Badelson for a sacred conversation about spirituality in corporate. Tina Maria is the managing partner in Deloitte Risk Advisory in Denmark and has been with Deloitte for more than 25 years. As you'll hear, Tina Maria shares so much gold when it comes to the implementation of spiritual tools in a corporate setting, as well as the benefits and outcomes she's experienced with her department and people. Without further ado, here is today's episode. Tina Maria, a very big and a very warm welcome to Mastery. Um, when I, when I, with this, when this new edition or expression of my work came through, you were one of the first, very first people that I thought of that I would love to have a sacred conversation with. And I am giddy with joy and jumping up and down in my seat because I'm so excited to see what was, what's going to come through in the sacred conversation with you. And I'm going to start off by just asking you, would you please introduce yourself to the world, tell us about you and whatever comes up for you, just share that with us. Yeah, and a a big thank you for me for being invited. I'm very appreciative of that. Always happy to share the the good message. So um, I am Tina Maria and uh, I'm a mom of uh, three boys that are 24, 20 and 17. I um, am still with my husband from uh, 89 we met, so that's a long way to go. Um, And uh, then I have, uh, you know, in my work, I'm uh, the business unit leader, so I'm responsible for 240 talents uh, within Deloitte, uh, risk advisory, we call it today. So uh, it's all about uh, risk, compliance, cyber, sustainability, all of that. So a very exciting uh, daily workplace I have. And then, of course, I have the other side of me, which is the spiritual side, which I am working with holistically. So both privately, but also uh, in my work. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, I think the very first question that I would like to ask you is, when did you discover that there was something other than what we see with our physical eyes or when did you when did your spiritual journey begin so it began uh, very early and then i closed it down so my grandmother uh she uh, you know talked with deceased people and uh, were meeting them uh, in her home and uh, so that was uh, the first introduction i got which I thought was both scary and also very interesting. She believed a lot in horoscopes and uh, things like that. 
um, and had a very calm, um, you know, she was very eased with, you know, dying because she knew that there would be a life after and another life after. So we have, you know, lots of uh, rehearsals to do and lots of learning to uh, to still uh, get. And then I closed it down and um, became much more uh, in the corporate side and, uh, you know, through my education. And in 2010, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, that gave me a time out from work. I was um, a consultant and uh, working uh, many hours. And it gave me um, both, you know, a good time with my kids, all three of them I had at the time. And, um, and it, uh, you know, I was around them, but also a reflection of, am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. And then I read an article um, with a woman uh, called Rekke Herz. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one of um, the other corporate the CEOs was interviewed and he pointed out that she was uh, a really good uh, coach and mm -hmm. counselor. And I thought in my head at one point I will uh, reach out to her, but I was in another place in my life. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to uh, 2018, I was um, coming back, you know, I was driving in the outer lane. I was working a lot of hours again and I promised myself having had breast cancer that now I really wanted to balance more. And uh, I lost myself uh, some way along the line. And um, I got another job offer, a really attractive one. And I, for the first time in my life, couldn't feel myself at all. I didn't know if I was going to say yes or no. And that scared me out completely because if I cannot feel myself mm. how can I live my life mm. and so uh, thinking about my thoughts in 2010 and 11 where I heard about Rekke the first time I thought you know I need some advice and I need it from someone that doesn't know me that mm. doesn't have any interest mm. in me because of mm. course I could ask my husband mm. and he would also think of our finances mm. and uh, you know security and all of that so I just mm -hmm. felt I wouldn't get you know the the answer that I really needed so mm -hmm. I asked for a session and she has a five years a waiting list mm -hmm. so that was not possible and then I just went in on her uh, home site and just uh, lined up for everything she had and <laughs> then they called me saying okay something is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> so I got an interview uh, with her in the airport um, and I really felt she knew me. Mm. I felt she understood mm. who I was. And uh, and she could really, it was like I clicked into myself again after that mm. conversation. Mm. So I, I really felt that this kind of guidance can really do something different than, than just a normal coach. And I have the coach education myself. So I know all the questions, but this was just yeah. a third dimension coming in and giving super new reflections yeah. and so she um she has a, a a top leader education for cxos uh, and i decided to to take that and of course uh, coming back to deloitte and having that conversation within uh, mm -hmm. the exec was uh, was difficult because this is you know my leader back then said um you know, you can go to uh, Harvard or uh, in Seattle, or I we yeah. will give you an MBA. Yes. And I said, but I, I, this is really what I feel I need. And he said, but this is um, kind of out of the ordinary. So yeah. uh, I really want you to think about it. And I actually asked uh, Rekke to take a dialogue with my boss then back then, because I knew that if he could feel what I felt, Mm. He would know that that would be right for me because he is also mm. very intuitive, but also very corporate. Mm. So he agreed to that. And uh, after their meeting, he came back and he said, I cannot explain this. <laughs> I really understand where you are coming from. Yeah. I can see that I can see what she can do for you. Yeah. And I really want to give you that. Yeah. But please, um, don't tell anyone. Just uh, keep it uh, quiet. <laughs> and I, I agreed to that and said, uh, "Super!" I just uh, was thrilled that uh, I got the Deloitte sign off on uh, on yeah. doing something like this, and I'm 
today so grateful for Martin Zuko and what he did for me back then yeah. because I feel that it changed also who I am in the world so yeah. I am a better person now today than what I was because I'm much more authentic and I have much more I use my intuition much, much more I trust myself much more yeah. and I feel much more comfortable about myself. And by that, I'm also a much better leader uh, today than what I was uh, when I started. And of course, being me, going on uh, Rekke's uh, really great uh, education. When I first, you know, we should meditate, I would raise my hand asking how long, how much close do I need the eyes? Because I was thinking this is not efficient at all i'm just <laughs> taking time of work and i'm sitting here in a circle and this is really weird so <laughs> so going through that and she had a lot of patience uh, and after the first three times i kind of understood and i could feel what was happening in me and all the um the methodology that we got as well, it, it really resonated well. Mm. And then I thought, hmm, I cannot be one person at work and another person privately. I, I need to combine this. Mm. And so I called Martin Circo and said, Martin, I know you said, uh, you know, I could get this uh, course and I should uh, be a little bit quiet about it, but I really need to implement this in Deloitte. And he was like, yeah, of course, I knew this was going to happen. I was just waiting for how long it would take you. And uh, so I asked him, um, I said to him, I really want to, on my teams, implement meditation. I want to give them the methodology that I got with Regen, you know, giving the talents, the because I, I felt so strongly that being able to drive yourself and, and this, you know, decide if you're going left or right. That was so powerful. So for the first time, mm -hmm. I felt myself that I could decide mm -hmm. and I could decide the right things for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very frustrated before and being also victimized a little bit. I victimized myself a little bit saying, mm -hmm. but this is also someone else doing this. So instead of taking, mm -hmm. you know, charge myself, yeah. I... I was her and then pointed fingers other way. Oh. And so this changed for me. And I thought if I could give this power to mm. every single talent in Deloitte, wouldn't that be wonderful? And they wouldn't, you know, be in a hurtful place like I've been for so many years. They could actually mm. be happy, more free and be a much more their authentic self. And so he gave me a really good advice, uh, Martin Sugo. So he said, Promise me one thing, don't, you know, don't make anyone do this. It has to be something that they want. So be aware of that balance because you're so enthusiastic and that yes. is amazing. Yes. But please have yes. that, uh, you know, um, humbleness yeah. Yeah. towards this. Yeah. And uh, and I can, when I get eager, I can, you know, tend to put pressure and, and being, uh, you know, a, a partner in Deloitte, mm. also I have the stars on my shoulders. So it could yes. make the talents uh, think they needed to do it, yes. but really didn't want to. So I needed yes. to create that space. So I, I thought about it and I just uh, felt, you know, I will... Um, I will see who I believe or who I into my intuition tells me yes. will be the best people to work with with this. And so I chose the um, both genders and um, and then uh, one of the, and I I did it on the projects and then I was also um, offering leader in uh, I was actually also offering leader for sixty people. Yeah. So um, so I chose not to be the one talking about it i would be behind the lines all the time to have that yeah. you know to be humble and make sure not to pressure anyone to do it but still uh, inspiring uh, behind the lines and making sure that they we did make a uh, progress here and so um on my project i had a very large pro project back then um 
And I asked my, uh, called my project manager uh, to a meeting and I asked him, uh, how would you feel about meditating with me for seven minutes? And he looked at me and said, I would feel quite odd, to be honest. <laughs> and I said, and, and if you could just put that aside, would you be willing to just try it out? Just sit yeah. with me quietly for seven minutes. And then I had a small uh, meditation. I used the Angel of Delight as a music background. And we just sat there for seven minutes. And I, when we were done, I asked him, uh, so Tobin, how do you feel? And he said, um, I don't feel I could really relax in the room. And it was still really a, a little bit weird. And I said, but would you be willing to do this by yourself? I will pay for the hours that you use. Yeah. But would you be willing to do this for the next two or three weeks by yourself? Yeah. I will give you the meditation. And then we can have another meeting and talk about yeah. you know, what did this do for you? Yeah. And so we agreed on that, and uh, we met up three weeks later, and he uh, was like, oh, this is fantastic, and I feel so energized, and it's amazing, and it calms me down, and he was really, uh, you know, into it, and I was like, this this is more, you know, I, I thank the universe a little bit, because th that was more than I could have hoped for, yeah. and so I had there you know a project leader and then we talked about on this project that you are working on yeah. how can we implement this how can we yeah. work with these uh, methodologies and so i would teach him and he would teach the team and so he called in told them his experiences with meditation what did it do for him yeah. why did he feel that this was important yeah. to give everybody a part of and then um, and so we meditated, uh, we were 20 people uh, on the team. So we all sat down, meditated together for a while. Wow. And uh, we did it, you know, a couple of times a week yeah. and tried different, you know, do it at client place yeah. space, because I said, this is also showing our clients that we take care of ourselves. It is seven minutes. It's like going to the coffee machine, take yeah. a cup of coffee yeah. and then bringing it back. I was, what about, yeah. Yeah. I was I was just going to highlight that because but because I want people to know that you said seven minutes because and seven minutes throughout like there's it can be five minutes or seven minutes or 10 minutes but it doesn't have to be sometimes we tend to think that spirituality or meditation or everything has to require a whole lot of thing like we have to have a special place and we have to have a special pillow and we have to have a special music and we have yeah. to have a special but really you can do it anywhere anytime no matter where you are and so i just wanted to emphasize that i didn't want to cut you off so yes no, 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 yeah exactly so and so i um, and and then we started having uh, meetings with with the team around you know what raises your energy mm -hmm. and what reduces your energy try yeah. and feel that when you go to work yeah and then we uh, invented the energy barometer because yeah. um, we wanted to give, and I wanted to give our talents and our leaders some tools that they could use in real life. Mm. And uh, I, you know, being in a male dominated environment mm. with, you know, we are used to working with KPIs. Mm. So mm. start, you know, if, when you want to make a, an yes. evolution, starting working with other yes. uh, themes like energy, that's, can come out a little bit odd. Yes. And when I asked some of our talents, you know, how are you doing? They would just say, I'm doing fine because that's what we do. We don't really want to burden anyone with anything. Yes. Um, and if someone says, I'm not doing fine, we feel it's a little bit awkward because how do we go back on that? Yes. Uh, and we have young leaders in Deloitte and we need to, you know, build them up to be strong leaders and, so I really felt the urge and they were also requesting it, asking, but how do I take these dialogues? Yeah. So we uh, simply uh, made a, yes. a, a two pager yeah. where we uh, had the energy barometer there. Um, and then we had small uh, models around, you know, think about when you lose energy, think about when you yes. gain energy yeah. and how can you change yourself in the moment? So if you lose energy, yeah. How can you, in an instant, gain energy right back? Yeah. 
Mm. And so uh, we talked about that and Tom was the one educating um, our team here. And um, he came with examples. I provided examples. And then I was just so happy because uh, one of uh, our senior consultants came to me and he said, um, you know, uh, he was uh, assigned to an assignment uh, at a client's place. And um, he felt that, you know, he wasn't introduced well enough and he couldn't see how he could solve the mm. the task at the client place. And he said, um, I'm so surprised, he said, because I was feeling loss of energy. Mm. And I would have been a little bit angry mm. Mm. before, you know, yep. going through these dialogues. And I would have talked to my colleague and passed on that negative energy. And they would have mm. talked to their colleague pass that negative energy on and he said and now you told me that I could like this change that energy yes and he thought about that and he said who would be able to change that for me and yeah. that was of course his immediate leader yeah. who at the time was told him so instead of you know talking uh, to his uh, peers and yes. telling yes. bad that stories about true. exactly yeah. he went directly Exactly. He went directly to his leader, immediate leader, saying, this yeah. drained me for energy. Yes. And I'm actually really, uh, you know, sad about this. Yeah. And so uh, Tom said, I'm super happy you came to me. We will change it immediately. Now I understand where you're coming from. So how about we do this? And he came to me and he said, this is so crazy because from being really angry, I was just super happy. And <laughs> You know, this is the power we all have. And that's what I feel is so interesting because if we give that power to yes. all of our, you know, employees or ourselves, yes. we will be able to make them, you know, give them more power to yes. feel what is right and what is wrong. And it's it, yes. a lot of times it's just about having the right conversation. Yeah. But I could see that we didn't have the right conversations and maybe the talents didn't feel that they could bring it up. No. But working with this, they really felt we have the room. Yeah. And that's like, a, have, that's like a monumental, fundamental exactly. change. Like you create yeah. a platform because it because not only does did he not spread the anger and the bickering and all of that, he now spreads joy and satisfaction yeah. and happiness instead. And that ripples out just as much as anger and the other stuff does. So the foundation, and, and I can see, and I love that you mentioned the thing about KPIs because, because again, sometimes, you know, I hear this with my clients all the time. Like it's, you know, spiritual is like, it's fluffy and it's woo woo and it's very, but we can actually, you can actually measure like how, if you just check in with yourself in the morning, how am I feeling today on a scale from one to 10 and then mm -hmm. shift. That's one of the things, the first things that I did years ago. And then I realized, okay, it was at a low end. And these days it's at the high end, most of the days. So that, that, that you begin to, it be, you can make it measurable. Yeah. So, yes. So go ahead. And then, and, and the, the interesting, yeah. So of course, for some people and from, for, for some of my talents, meditating is something that they don't you know want to do they don't yeah. feel that it's for them and yeah. what i what what that's why we made this um one pager uh yeah. because for me it's more about creating the mind space you know space in the mind because when we get stressed out we are very occupied in our heads and mm -hmm. and therefore i'm it's not important it for me it's important to do the breath work, to meditate, to do things like that. Mm -hmm. But I told them, you know, while I meditate, then I want you to go sit on a bench alone, mm -hmm. just cleansing your head, mm -hmm. breathing mm -hmm. in, breathing mm -hmm. out, just mm -hmm. taking the seven minutes mm -hmm. or go for a walk by yourself, just mm -hmm. watching the trees, touching the trees, whatever would be uh, the <laughs> right thing to do. Exactly. But do what is right for you yeah. because I, I know you know inclusion and uh, you know we are uh, different uh, individuals and yeah. we need to honor what is right for us but yeah. for all of us as a leader it's important for me that they have you know the mind space yes. that they make sure that they cleanse their heads 
Yes. Which way they, they choose to do yeah. it is a uh, flexible. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that it's um that everybody does it. Um and how have you basis. found because what like what you're doing is essentially changing culture, like uh, corporate yeah. culture. So 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 how have you found that? Like how how have you found it? How what what challenges have you experienced and what outcomes have you have you experienced? Yeah. So I think for me, I mean it takes courage to do this because you need to stand out. This is you know, not normal. Yes. And that's why I chose to do it as an evolution. So I picked out the ones on my team that I felt, yeah, you know, would go for this, would feel yeah. that that would be interesting and uh, also important for them. Yeah. So that was uh, because I know I knew with myself, if I started at partner level, yeah, it would die. Yeah. Because then it's not only me that needs to be, be curved courageous it's it's everybody else that i'm putting that on and i feel sometimes that our younger generations are more open they are more yes. you know yeah asking for different uh, ways of of living and yeah. then and therefore I, I i deliberately chose to go uh, that way so of course uh, people have uh, looked at me curiously uh, in deloitte and they also um some are shaking their heads, thinking yeah. this is uh, this yeah. is crazy. Yeah. But my results speaks for themselves, and that was uh, the very interesting meeting I had with uh, Martin Zuko. Uh, yeah. I I don't know if it was like one and a half year later or two year later, two years later, but the our upward feedback, you know, the talents evaluation of us as a leadership yes. group, they were around you know a medium a, a little bit below medium maybe yeah, yeah and they we were the best performing entity in consulting in Deloitte Denmark yes and th I was you know so happy and uh, I actually let a little bit go of the numbers because I was so focused on also getting the cultural part uh, mm -hmm. working and and doing what is right and and what happened was that um all of our talents worked harder mm. they mm. had more hours mm. 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 and that was not something i thought would be an outcome at all because mm. i i do treasure the the balanced work life but i just yeah. think that everybody was uh yeah more happy and they you know that extra hour didn't hurt as much and mm -hmm. um, maybe that was the reason for that and then uh, our finances just went through the roof we ended up being the best performing uh, also financial entity in consulting in Denmark and that was uh, you know more than I, I I was also myself really surprised and Martin said um, yeah this is unbelievable. This is interesting to see yes. me taking a different path. Of course, mm -hmm. getting the followership, mm -hmm. getting my partner group in my entity to mm -hmm. work along with me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we all, you know, because I also honor that we are different people. So I am in, in my partner group back then, I was the most spiritual one. But, mm -hmm. you know, my two other uh, partners at the time, they were eager to uh, and curious enough and we just yes. embraced it and also yeah. found a way for them to embrace this in their way because yeah. it's, it's not one yeah. size fits all it's being uh, sure. diverse and inclusive about it and and that has been uh, yeah a, a fantastic journey and uh, I'm very happy for uh, and grateful actually yeah. for the results yeah. that we uh, that yeah. we yeah got and I think that that's uh, that is part of how we affect a you know change on a larger scale is when you also begin to see even though you can't that you can't say that that's going to be happening every time but once once you begin to see that larger uh, culture change but also have an effect on the finances and the happiness and the and, and the, the and because then there's also less churn there's less turnover in terms of employees people stay longer all of those things are measurable and uh affect the finances and and the baselines of of companies so that's just i, I love i absolutely love that and yeah, so thank you welcome. For, go ahead you're welcome 
but also on a personal level, yeah. my career starting progressing. I was just gonna at yeah. a whole whole different level than where it was before. Yeah. So um, so I uh, was uh, elected to be the uh, um, TPS leader uh, yeah. in Denmark for uh, for whole of Deloitte. Yeah. Never would have seen myself or thought, and I didn't apply. I, I, you know, that was something that I was was also asked to uh, to, to be a yeah exactly to apply for. Yeah. Uh, never thought about that uh, that that would be an option even. Mm -hmm. And uh, today I am uh, you know managing partner for our risk advisory two hundred and forty people. Yeah. Never saw yeah. that coming as well. So I feel that not only. You know, yeah. has a lot of talents in Deloitte, in Denmark, uh, gotten benefit from this and feeling much more empowered and, and in a better place. But also personally, I can see a, a career growth that I would never have uh, anticipated. So uh, on, on two different levels, I I got so much more than what I asked for. Yeah. And uh, I'm also really grateful that I am today a much better leader. I'm much more holistically um, and of course I'm business driven because we need to be that yes. uh, working in the business environment but I can see that the KPIs that are truly important are of course uh, you know the opinions from our talents but also creating yes. the opportunities for our talents to actually do more of a holistic uh, journey with us yeah. and being you know how do we let them be their authentic mm -hmm. self and uh, and and work with that. So yeah, yeah, that's the one of the things that in terms of because it's uh, the word that comes up for me is sort of like sur surrender. What I have found also, you know, in my work in my life as well is that when we surrender or give up some sort of outcome, it usually and lean into spirit or meditation or source or whatever we want to call it. When we lean into that intuition then usually because then usually the results become so far outside of our because what we can comprehend with our human mind because we cannot yeah. see. and also the results are um win 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 they're not just win for the company or for the person but they're also wins for the clients because the yeah. clients will see uh, you know someone they will see a consultant who is more engaged and more happy more satisfied when they're more engaged you know they 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 tend to find you know the errors or uh, corrections and they can come up with solutions so it's 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 not just like it's win do you do you agree like do you see that like yeah. that you go ahead yeah so uh, i am uh, having uh, always talking uh, with my talents uh, you know, there is the win for the client, super important. Yeah. There is also the win for Deloitte, of course. Yeah. Um, is this something that uh, is the right thing for us to, to do? And yeah. then there is the win for the team. Yeah. And then there is the win for the individual. So I have the four win equation that we go through. Because yeah. for me, it's 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 always, uh, you know, we are individuals with uh, individual needs and uh, career plans and career paths and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. But we are also a team and we are representing a brand and mm -hmm. we are working with the client. So all of that needs for me to be in one equation to mm -hmm. be in. And, mm -hmm. and that also helps uh, me and my teams to be less self-oriented mm -hmm. because uh, of course, we need to be in that that equation, each and every one of us. But we also need to remember that we are more than just one. We yeah. are a team. We are a firm. We are, uh, you know, working with with clients, and there are bread yeah. and butter and our, you know, hearts uh, yeah. are put into that, and yeah. and that we need to do uh, in the best way possible. Yeah. So, yeah. So I definitely yeah. use the four win equation. Uh, yeah, yeah, and so. Can you tell us a little bit about your like your daily rituals? Like, first of all, how they also like how they how they started? Because I'm assuming that there has been an evolution for you as well over the years. Like, um, so can you tell us about your daily uh, practices or your daily rich? I don't know, rituals, but what what you do on a daily basis, both yeah. personally and, and professionally. Yes, and what I also want to share is the. Uh, um, now that we introduced the energy barometer a couple of years ago, and now I'm introducing it again in risk advisory. So they are on that journey as well, because I 
got a new team and that's all about yes. implementing that. Yep. Um, and so what I talk with my teams around a lot is um, how, you know, how was, how can we bring the best energy to the meeting with our clients? Mm -hmm. So what is your responsibility in entering that room? Mm -hmm. And when you feel, because for me, it's all about, you know, feeling the room, making sure that we are in a good place. So what I can do, I can tend to heal the room. Mm. If I can feel that, that that also during the meeting, if I can feel that this is, you know, there is tension here. This is a, mm. a tough meeting we are going through. So just uh, sending love and best wishes to everybody and being grateful to sitting in that room. I don't ask anyone else to do that, but I will do that as my ritual. Yes. And I will also do it in internal meetings if I can feel that that, that is the energy that I need to send in to uh, to the room uh, to make sure that we can you know have the the best trust build and and having uh, the best vibe there um, and my talents are more and more feeling the room themselves so they're also they can feel if the client swifts or if someone on the team is is is, is not really there so we talk about it and we uh, we evaluate on it and then um, did that in my um, former role a lot as being the offering leader of 60 people and today being the business unit leader of 240 people. I need more leaders to get in uh, working with that. So what I'm I'm doing now is sending people on the spiritual leader mm -hmm. and CEO leadership education yes. because the ambassadors are in extremely important because I cannot change 240 people i need to have talents uh, strong leaders that are um, yeah. you know walking the talk as well yeah and so i gradually uh, find who is the right ones and then i am sending them them on these uh, leadership um, seminars and i just uh, my chief of staff that i have now she mm -hmm. just went through her spiritual uh, leadership because i told her being a part of this journey and being my right hand, and that is also my heart, you yeah. know, she is extremely important for yeah. me to make the culture yeah. changes that are necessary. And also, um, you know, speaking uh, the same language as I do yeah. in, in this. So to make sure that we can do that, I am, um, I am picking out who would be yeah. right to, uh, to help on, on this journey. And uh, luckily uh, there are, is a lot where this is also super interesting. Yeah. I just uh, in risk advisory uh, pronounced well-being officers. So we are talking yeah. about what is well-being. How yeah. can we get that embedded in each of the offerings that we have? Yes. Um, and, uh, and they have, and I didn't choose them out of uh, stars on the shoulders. I chose them out of who has an interest in this, mm. who lives this. Because yeah. what I learned on my journey is if you don't live it, you cannot preach it. No. It's it's impossible because it, it, it just gets empty. You yeah, if you don't live it yourself, yeah. you will not focus on it and it will be a nice event, but it will never last. Yeah. So no. for me it's it's so important to get this embedded so yeah. that we start yeah. living it. And we start yeah. living it when we are multiple leaders yeah. that yeah. are highlighting uh, the agenda yeah. uh, and also understanding what good it brings to actually be a better version of yourself and how you can take yeah. that charge over your own life. Yeah. Um, then we uh, have meditations uh, three times a week in risk advisory. That is a uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and uh, Thursday. And we just changed it to from meditation to breath work because yeah. People are falling off with the word meditation. They feel that it's too goofy. You are sitting in a circle and they're drinking a strawberry tea or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so I've, I've I've really tried to see how can we, if we are going to embed this even stronger yeah. in each and every talent. Yeah. How can we do it in a more corporate way, using yeah. more corporate language around it? Um, and so what I am embedding and in the meditation, so I have someone 
who is hired in to do the meditations yep. again to make it not something that yeah yeah we tell you to do but something that is available yeah for you to do yeah um and then i just got the most fantastic email from one of our talents and risk advisory he and, and that was the guy and i i just I'm, I'm i'm so grateful when i get these messages because it tells me that just changing one soul yes is one yes. soul more yeah. balanced one soul better in the world yeah. one soul bringing out more positive yes. energy yes. and that's worth it all for me yes. and then um, and of course i hope to reach more than one but it's just a yeah. manifestation yeah. for me that this is uh, going yeah. to stay yeah. for sure and, and also so remember, I just want to highlight, so one person, so he he knows at least 10, 15 people, not just within exactly. the organization, but in, within his life. So the yeah. one person actually becomes 10 people, it becomes, so it's like, it's like they say that like a, a smile can travel thousands of miles, because you know, when you smile, you send that forward, you pay it forward, and you may never know the full width of what you're doing right here, because, yeah. it, because it reaches so far out into the world the universe that you you and and energetically as well it's just because everything is energy so it's yeah sorry yes yeah, so go ahead go ahead yeah so so what i so we have someone in and what i what i tell her is what is important for people like us yeah so yeah. we are more fact based mm. so she so doing the meditation she mm. will also explain a little bit about mm. what does it do to the body yes what the science tells us that you know yes. we are in Deloitte we live of our brains that's you know our capital yeah. and not we never exercise the brain we think about running swimming doing a lot for the lower part of the body but mm. seldom do we actually appreciate or value yeah. that the exercise that we do on the brain yeah. and for me it's kind of swifting that focus a little bit to yeah. say Keep on working on your bodies. I'm all for it. But remember, yes. the brain is uh, one of our biggest assets. Yes. And we really need to brain exercise uh, yes. more to uh, make sure that we maintain our brains as uh, yes. best as possible. Yes. And for me, I'm 54 years old. Yes. I am also yes. very focused on being healthy uh, in my brain as well yes. as, uh, as in my body. Yes. So therefore... Uh, having the age and uh, being a much more realistic of uh, yes. how a, a long life yeah. in a, in the high speed will do to you and your brain and yeah. how to actually, yeah. you know, do better for our younger talents that hasn't faced that yet, but it will come. Yes. And I would much rather have them face it in, you know, in, in their right state than being yes. stressed out and vulnerable yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, being a, yeah. uh, in yeah. a in a place of fear yeah um, you mentioned earlier and that's that's another important point because you mentioned how the younger generation seems to be more open and what i see i think that you know it's like it's the continued evolution it's because we have worked on ourselves we have yeah. because i see this with my nephews i have three nephews who are sort of like the same ages as your children and i see how way more open they are to these things and, and, and I think that that's because we've fertilized that soil so that, so that they have that ability. We've gone through all of the challenges, mm -hmm. not so they don't have to, because they will go through their own challenges. Unfortunately, you know, we want to, we want to clear the path, but yeah, that's, they have to go through their own stuff. But, um, but I think that that's, that's the evolution. And I'm also old enough now to see that that's what's happening, right? We, we, we fertilize the soil so that they now can, 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 can have it sort sort of a little bit easier, and our mothers did the same and the same. So it's it's a continued evolution. Um, I'm wondering about your like your personal daily practice. Like, do, how do you what do you do? Do you get up in the morning? Do you meditate? Do you go for a walk? Or are there any things that are that you do on a daily basis or on a weekly basis? How do you how do you manage your your own personal spirituality? So I'm I manage my own personal spirituality, but also by also bringing initiatives to work. So I will participate in these meditations yeah. because for me, they're super important. Yes. Um, but I also um, do uh, winter bathing. Yeah. And that is uh, to ground myself even more. Yeah. 
I have uh, installed earthing uh, sheets in my house, also to my children and earthing pillows, just to make sure that I am grounded as much as possible. Uh, I have for the first couple of years uh, entering the spiritual universe, uh, been flying a lot, you know, working a lot with the uh, spiritual part and I, I love it. Yeah. So I, I work with my guides, I meditate. Um, yeah. And uh, but I also realized that uh, I flew too much and was uh, too too little grounded. Yes. And now I have really taken yes. that uh, yes. that path in. And even my boys say that they feel the difference sleeping yes. on an earthing uh, sheet and uh, yes. sleeping on earthing pillows. Yes. For them, yes. they sleep much better now. They yes. one of my boys had difficulty, yeah, sleeping yes. through the night. He is uh, in a much better place now. So it, it's all of that, um, those initiatives. I do meditate at home as well. Um, I don't have like a firm practice uh, doing it every morning at, uh, you know, seven o'clock or every evening, but I'm doing it when I have the quietness in the house. So when I get up early, I will go in and meditate for myself. I um, have also worked with uh, Rekke Hertz has uh, a spiritual universe yeah. that I am a part of. Um, and it gives me also um, different meditations to use depending on what yeah. I need. Yeah. Uh, but also I've actually given access to uh, some of my employees that yeah. I felt needed it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think this is the gift, you know, it is a personal growth and it is a personal development. And therefore... It, it's uh, something that I can't, you know, put on everybody, but it needs to come gradually as the uh, people evolve and they, uh, and I can see that that they have the the need for that. But you uh, and then you you you've incorporated into your daily life work so that so yeah. that it doesn't necessarily have to be like on a set schedule every day because it's so ingrained in everything that you do and you're a part of. And and, and exactly. I think the thing you say about grounding is because I, I love that you share that because in the beginning, I, for a lot of people, I think that they think that spirituality is about, you know, um, personally, like just, you know, ascending and then like being sea of suckers and taking off. And then like, I'm spiritually evolved and all of that, but we have physical bodies for a reason. I see us as being spiritual beings, having a human experience and we're here for a reason. Um, and we cannot do what we came here to do without our physical bodies. We need that. We need that vessel to express the love that we are, the spirit that we are, the the soul that we are in this lifetime through that. And so, so it's really, really important that we get to that place of, uh, I don't know if it's the word is accepting or like being comfortable in our physical vessels um, to be able to express that, that will be, what we came here to do so that's so that i just want to emphasize that as well because so many every i th and i think it's normal when you start your spiritual journey that you go like you're in that realm so um so that you connect how do you connect so in in your work um you mentioned earlier you know using your intuition in making decisions or um choosing which way to go and how do you how do you notice it at, if you do at all like do you because I know when it comes to the clear senses some are more developed than others like how do you tell us about your experience um does that make did it did that does that question make sense in terms of I can at least try and answer it as I yeah. understand your question and then you can uh, push it a little bit if, if that's not the right thing so um how how do I so what I I I will be very aware of um, which meeting I'm entering, yes. um, and uh, I will really emphasize myself to be in a loving place mm. uh, to make sure that you know we all feel comfortable in mm. in the room, and it's it's not always. I'm, I mean I'm I'm human, so so it's not always that I. Yes. I can come out of a meeting thinking that could have went better if I'd been in a better place. So yes. I'm, I'm just to be honest, I yeah. am in on a journey and I will continue to be on a journey. But yes. when I am in a good place, I, I am really um, considering what kind of meeting and how can I make that 
difficult conversation or whatever it's about being more comfortable Mm. and coming from you know the best place Mm. um and um and so that's one thing that i i really work with Mm. um i also ask my guides to be and that i know that's quite strange and uh not Maybe not for you, but for a lot of people, <laughs> it would be very strange. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I will uh, talk to my guides and ask them to uh, to be there with me on yes. on meetings yes. to make sure that I have the best guidance I can I can have, and also mm-hmm. to stand strong because I I do end up in situations where I will have to go for you know in mm-hmm. front. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's difficult and I can feel Mm -hmm. alone in those moments and Mm -hmm. I feel less alone when I'm having my guide team with me Mm -hmm. and uh, knowing that I'm doing this for a higher purpose than just for myself. And I, that's a, that's a really important. And, um, uh, and so I also implemented the yin yoga uh, Mm -hmm. two times a week for everybody in risk advisory. So, also get you know we are sitting in yes. at a desk all of that right so yeah. getting that uh, yes. body stretched out and, and making yes. sure that we are um, taking care of ourselves uh, yeah. the best way uh, possible and um yeah and can and i ask co- you, yeah can i ask you another question yeah, please do. So, because we're coming up on time, but I just I, I have a million questions, but we're so I'm gonna make it short. Uh, but um, one question I had is like, one, what, what, what have you found to be the most challenging part of your journey? And what would I you think, like to? Yeah. Have, and what would you have liked to have known sooner? Also, so that's yeah. So don't underestimate living it yourself. Mm-hmm. that's really uh, the, the most important part mm-hmm. and then going in and implementing things like this it's um it takes a lot of courage because you will stand out and uh, therefore you also need to stand strong in yourself how did uh, you find that courage how did that how did you how did you because oftentimes what i think is uh, uh, for me, it's like you think you need courage, but what you need is aligned action. So it's about taking small steps. But how? So how did you find that courage? How did that? Was it your grandmother that showed up, or like what? 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 Um... It's, it's a really good question. I really felt an inner force. I was so enthusiastic about the power I got myself, and I really yes. wanted to share it. Yes. And I can see that people are struggling yes. and I really just wanted them to, you know, here's the solution. Let's, uh, let's work with that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, creating that methodology uh, framework uh, that we use in Deloitte now that, you know, that we talk about, that's, uh, that's really important because getting the, giving the support to everybody else. Mm. And then I think finding the spearheads uh, in the organization that will take this journey with you that so you have, you know, people with the same mind and heart and and wish for for the future. And because it does take more than one to change things. It really does. And then. And we can be an inspiration. And I'm, you know, so humble and uh, grateful that you invited me in here because you feel that I could be an inspiration. And for me, yes. that is a, I, that I is can, also amazing. I can, I can feel the I can feel the hearts and the minds that this is going to touch. I am so excited to be sharing. <laughs> but um, but it, but it just tells me that it, it's um you know you need more to show that because I can be a role mm-hmm. model for some. Yes, but yes. others can be role models for others, and yes. you really need that diversity yes. uh, empowered to yes. show that. Uh, and then coming back to that email that one of my talents just wrote me la- this week, I think I received it, saying he had done breath work before, was kind of tapped out of it. And being a part of what we now are offering in risk advisory in Deloitte, Denmark gave him you know 
you know, the, the reach back to when he was exercising. Mm -hmm. He said that now he's much more balanced. He feel less stressed. He feel much better at communicating. He feels much better at being around his um, his uh, colleagues and the spring, you know, bringing the good energy. And there was so much good in this, in this email. And I, I just felt so grateful because as you said, when we talk about it, it's spreading good energy. And yes. the more we can get on this journey, yes. the better energy we'll have in Deloitte yes. and the more comfortable we will all feel at going to work. And for me, yes. and that's just worth it all. Beautiful. Is there anything we haven't talked? Is there anything else you want to share before we uh, say goodbye? I mean, we could go on for, but I want to respect your yeah. time. So is there anything so, else, any final words? So maybe uh, one thing just to show how, you know, being uh, strong and, and being the, the spiritual spearhead uh, also give you the, um, the, the, the muscle to uh, to be strong in hard times. So um, my husband got a blood clot, uh, a stroke uh, two and a half years ago and was uh, totally paralyzed. And then for me, having that spiritual mm. ground was extremely important. And for my boys, mm. that was extremely important because it, it just kind of makes it more universal. You know, what can we learn from this? Why are we here? Um, how can we embrace it and not worry, but believe and trust and, uh, you know, see the bright side of the future and still be a good leader at Deloitte and still, you know, doing all of that uh, good stuff. And I, I felt that that brought us, uh, you know, closer together as a family, but also, emphasized or really uh, showed me mm. how much yeah. easier big crises are mm. being spiritual yes yes compared to when i got breast cancer yes in 2010 and the treatment in 11 you know this yes. is just this was this was so much different and so much stronger for me and they uh, never doubted the universe or uh, mm. anything and he is uh, luckily not paralyzed today but you know, had a brain damage, so is on uh, on pension now. But nevertheless, we are a super happy family, and uh, I am a super happy leader, and still have the energy to you know bring out the the spiritual uh, part of me uh, both at home but also uh, at work. So that makes me emotional. I mean that that's just that's that's just so so beautiful because we're talking about is resilience and yeah. And I just want to highlight is that that's built over time. So people who are possibly who's listening to this, who's new to spirituality, don't think that this necessarily comes overnight. This is about, you know, taking small steps by steps by steps. And then eventually that's, that's where you lead you to. That's why this, that's why this podcast is named mastery is because of that's what we get to. We get to that mastery level of yeah. This is something we can do. This is something that, you know, you're resilient, you're open, you're flexible, you're aligned, you're all these things. So, And that's exactly what I feel, that I am really being more resilient. And the people that are entering this space are being much more resilient uh, and much more happier because they are living a more authentic and true life to mm. themselves. Yes. And uh, so just want to maybe close off with having a conversation uh, about you know the drama that can also be in a workplace that we all have yes and this gives us the tools to step outside of the drama look at it yes. and be much more you know spiritual in our answer to it instead of taking which i did before going right into the yes. drama and being a part of it yes. you know stepping out sucking out you know the oxygen of the drama yes. and being much more holistic about yes. You know, what is the right answer taking the client, the brand, the yes. team and yourself into consideration? And that will make you this, you know, that will make you uh, much stronger as a leader because you will take the decisions that are right in yes. the four winds instead yes. of take taking the decision that will make one happy, but uh, every other, you know, lose. And I think for yes. me, 
that's super powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was in corporate many, many years ago, that was one of my first actions was to, to, to not be part of the gossip anymore and to actually yeah. voice that I don't want to be part of gossiping about other people because no, exactly. it's negative energy and it's bringing yeah. people down. I was in the financial industry and it was just that there was just so much gossip. And I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm no longer here for that. I want to, I want to have conversations that elevate us. I want to talk. So yes, but we're not going to go into that. Um, Tina, well, one, one closing, I'm not going to say that I have one more because I have a fun thing. And I think that was really fun because uh, I was invited to uh, to the U.S. Deloitte in in uh, in U.S. Uh, they had a search for spiritual spiritual leadership, and yeah. I was the only one entering their search. <laughs> Whoa! So that was also something I was grateful for, but because then I actually made a meditation with uh, our U.S. firm, yes. and uh, and that was uh, amazing. And I I'm just so happy that they're, they're on that path as well good thank you my heart is full my my eyes are full of tears of gratitude tina maria thank you so much for joining us for this sacred conversation thank you for sharing your wisdom your brilliance your intelligence uh for being so open and forthcoming so being so honest authentic all of the things. So, um, so thank you so much. And to everyone listening. Um, yeah, just, I hope that you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Have a wonderful day wherever in the world you might be. Bye. Thank you. That is what I have for you in today's episode of Mastery with Maria Serafina. I hope it served you well. For all the deeds and details, click the link in the description and help me spread the love of this transmission by sharing it with a friend or on social media or leave me a comment or review. Have a wonderful day. God bless.